Today I am back with another Substance Painter tutorial because the last one, the Venus Plans, was super successful and you guys liked it a lot so I thought why not just create another one. I have an amazing asset, it's a motorcycle, like an old Vespa and I'll be really breaking it up using anchor points, using different layers, stacking techniques and I'll be just showing you my workflow, how I bake it properly and then going into Substance doing all the fancy stuff and then we export everything to Arnold and then for the final touch we're actually going into Nuke to composite it. So this series is a little bit more technical and I had to split up the videos in three different sections just because of the duration of each segment. This amazing and detailed model was provided by Stuart Bunkel. He's a quite active member on my Discord server so I reached out to him and I asked him if I could use his asset and he was happy to agree on that. So be sure to check out his social media accounts. He's super talented. I am also uploading all the scene files to my Patreon so that includes the model, the Maya scene file, the substance scene files, the baked images, the final rendered images. So everything is accessible through my source files tier on Patreon. You will also get access to all my previous source files I ever uploaded. It's probably more than 90 different scene files by now. So uh, be sure to support me and check that out. Also, I hid a little Easter egg in this video. So if you find it, um, comment the time code below and the first one doing that will get pinned in the comment section below. And before we get started, I first of all want to thank you guys for your continued support on my channel. We did reach 50,000 subscribers. I'm super stoked by that. It's a huge number for me and I really appreciate all the support on all my social accounts. So thank you so much for your continued support. I do appreciate it a lot. Thank you so much. All right, I first want to show you the scene setup, which also includes the baking process. And before we can import or start our substance project, I'm first heading to Maya to show you how I'm setting up the scene. So I first imported my regular model, which is this one. It has its own texture sets, which is great for substance. And for my workflow, I also created a twice subdivided high resolution mesh of this one. So I've both exported as FBX files and now we can go back to Painter and start the project by hitting Ctrl N and pick the high resolution asset from my export FBX. Make sure um, to set your document resolution. I'm just sticking with uh, 1024 and the rest is default and I'm just importing that. Okay, next up we will be doing the baking. So I'm going to bake mesh maps and I'll try to um, explain all the steps. So my output size will be 4K and I will, in the common settings, I'll make sure I will do some um, aliasing, super sampling to four. I would not recommend eight. Essentially, this is uh, multiplying your um, calculated resolution for your map. So essentially it's four times four. So it's 16K will be the calculated map size and it will be back, uh, scaled down back to 4K. I also go down to ID. I make sure that my color source, especially for this asset, it might be different for your case. I'm going to mesh ID. I'm setting this to random and I make sure I set it uh, apply to all. I go to occlusion. I crank up the rays. I reduce my occlusion distance to 0.1. I think if it's too, too strong, you will get all these um, unwanted areas which will be occluded. So I am going really low. Also make sure to apply it to everything. Curvature also crank up the rays. I leave the rest at default, apply to all. Position is, this, is the default and thickness. I'll reduce the occlusion distance to, um, to 0.7 or something. I, I just increase it a bit so I have more um, thickness in the calculation. And also I crank up the secondary rays, apply to all. This just makes sure everything is applied to all your texture sets. I'm uh, quickly checking again. Um, you can click the low poly as high poly mesh, but both are high poly anyways. Um, and then super sampling four and the rest is just default. It takes some time definitely with these settings. So grab a coffee, get some lunch or go to bed and hit baking. This will take some time. All right, baking is done. So what I wanna do next, I wanna swap out the geos quick. So I go to edit in the top here, project configuration, go to select my geo, make sure that it's the same. That's why I exported it twice, one for low, one for high. And I'm just swapping out the Vespa. So now I have my low uh, resolution asset in here with my high baked um, texture maps. Make sure the texture set names are the same, otherwise you'll get issues. But once that is done, you will have now a nice and fast model to work with, but you can use the high resolution baked maps. So let's just quickly cycle through them. So we do have our random IDs. 
And what I also want to do, I want to, because I do have glass objects here, I want some uh, good UDEM exports uh, later on. So I will go into each texture set and make sure I'm, I'm creating this opacity um, uh, material here or this uh, channel, I mean. So I'm just clicking opacity. The default parameters are just fine. So opacity for all of these. And then I'm heading to my main texture set, which is um, the body here. I'm hitting Alt-Q for quick toggling visibilities. What I also want to do, I want to delete all the layers um, for all the texture sets. So I'm also going through that quick. So now working on my main texture set, which is body two, I want to create a new fill layer and I want to rename this to base because this will be instantiated across all kind of uh, texture sets. So I'm setting my material to be a, uh, a 0.18 grayscale tone. I want to make sure my roughness is around 0.6, uh, which is a nice neutral uh, rough gray value. Metallic zero, normal untouched opacity to one. This is my starting point. So what I want to do now is control shift and D to export or instantiate this across all texture sets, which will give me now a nice starting point. All right, so we will be getting started with the tire first. We will start simple and easy and then it will get uh, quite technical pretty fast because we will be using anchor points and all that. So I'm Alt Control right clicking to select my texture set, hitting Alt Q to isolate this area. And I will be creating my first uh, base material, which will be a regular fill. And I'll make sure I pick some dark value. Tires are typically super dark, so around 0.00. Uh, 00 5 or 0.01 or something like that. It's, it's a very dark tone, um, something like that. And then you also want to apply some roughness to it because you want to get that rubber feeling to it. So I'm just increasing the roughness for now um, to something like this. And you can see we do have a studio environment. So this is very neutrally lit, which is important in the surfacing look of stages. All right, so what I want to do next is to create this nice breaker, which you can see in the reference here on the left. So I'm right clicking my uh, rubber layer and creating a new fill effect here. Um, we don't want to affect color, we only want to uh, uh, work on the roughness. So what I'm doing here, I'm using the black and white spots 3 as my roughness material here. You can see by just applying that, we already get some nice breakup. Uh, we do want to change um, the noise parameters, we want to increase the scale like that. And we also want to change my um, projection type to triplanar and also increase the scale as well to get these really small um, kind of flakes. This already works, uh, looks quite nice. We do want to adjust it a little, so I'm creating a, a levels effect on top of the fill. I'm changing the affected channel to be roughness, and now I should be able to control it to get really the effect I'm going for. They are supposed to be uh, quite dry looking, um, but I like to see some kind of glints as well. So it's a nice mix of both, right? It's, it's very dry, but you get these nice pings here. Um, I think this works already quite well. I just want to reduce my overall roughness a little bit, so it's not super uh, dry, but I think this is already looking quite nice. We can also change, let's change the texture set to 4K to see our final um, size, which looks like this. So we can probably go a little bit lower on the on the texture size. So maybe go to 55 in the scale, which makes this a little bit smaller. We can also um, play around with con contrast in here to get these really nice glinty pieces, um, which I think adds a really nice touch to the base rubber. So I'll switch them back to 2K. What I want to do next now is I want to create this um, lighter material on the inside, right? So to do that, I'm hitting F1 to show my UV space as well. It's a lot easier to paint because I know I need to kind of um, create a mask for, for these areas here. So what I want to do here, I'm, I'm creating a new material on top, which is just affecting the color, right? So I'm creating a new um, fill layer here, call this maybe inseam, I'm not sure for a better for the lack of a better name. And I just want to control the color. So I'm just um, selecting the color picker here, click and hold and pick a nice material here on my reference, something darker, something like that could work quite nice. I do want to make it maybe a little bit darker than I just picked something uh, like that, I guess. And now comes the, the time where we need to kind of uh, create a mask for this. So on the inseam, I'm right clicking and creating a black mask, which disables this. And then I want to create a paint effect on the mask section. So essentially now I could um, paint a white mask and you should see um, the inseam things. What I always like to do, it's a little fast, bit faster to work. I'm just drawing where I need to uh, want to paint. So it's just easier to work in UV space and see exactly where you need to uh, paint your maps on. 
And then what I want to do, I want to create my um, polygon tool, which is um, hotkey number four. Make sure it's uh, set to polygons. And then what I just want to do, I want to click and drag to create my um, inseam like that. We can also check, if I go back to um, this mode here, you can see this is nicely selected up until all the inseams. And uh, we don't care about the inside, but it's just a, a quick and fast way to do it. So let me just get that going. and. Uh, Okay, now we have this applied. So what I also want to do, I want to adjust the roughness a little bit. So I'm going back to my material, click on the roughness here, and I do want to change the value a little bit. So I want to make it rough like that, but then in my material, I want to change my type to roughness, and I just want to blend it back a little bit. So it's just a little bit less of this uh, flakiness. And next up, what I want to do is I want to create this, uh, this text on here. Right, you can see there is this nice, and if I zoom out, uh, zoom in a little bit, you can see there is this text all around this here. And it will be a similar approach as we just did. We are just, instead of uh, using the polygon tool, we will be projecting some kind of text on it. So I quickly went to Photoshop and searched for some fonts and just created a few uh, stencils. You can see I just used the default text for the text tool, um, this lower ipsum. Uh, default text, and I just saved that out as an image, and I'm using that as my projection stencil. So back in Painter, I'm just going to import resource. I'm selecting my resource, which is um, in my exported folder section in Photoshop. And I want to tag this as an alpha. And then I want to import this as my project. So it's not always there, it's just for this project. And then you can see my font stem is here at the bottom. So for this to work, I want to create another fill. And in this time, I just want to work on the height. So what I want to do, I just want to crank up the height. You won't see anything. Um, because we need to mask it off because right now we are applying the same height to everything so there will be no difference. So I'm just calling this um, font stamp and then I'm creating a black mask for this. And if I now create a new paint layer as a uh, paint effect for the mask, I can now use my um, projection tool, which is hotkey three, and I can drag my stamp into my image like that. And now if I paint, you will see that we get the stencil, right? It's it's uh, kind of um, extruding everything. Hitting S, you can control your stencil. And what I want to do, I want to project in UV space. And I also want to um, go into my UV view as well. And once I have it nicely aligned, I just need to essentially paint or project the mask and you can see the text uh, appearing. So I'm just trying to kind of replicate um, the reference so I'm just adding a few more effects here. And let's say, yeah, let's put the numbers on this section here. Um, it goes all the way on the other side, which it does not really matter. You don't need to get really crazy with matching it. It's just the overall idea which you want to um, convey. So I'm just also projecting the text. I think this looks quite nice, even though it, it won't be that readable. I think it just works to just have this text there. So as you can see, I'll be just doing this for all the tires now. All right, so the cool thing now is that we painted all the masks and the beauty is now we can still go to our font stem and we can just change the height. So we still have all the control to really make this work. And what I want to do now, I want to break up the edge a little bit because it feels a little bit too perfect and too clean for this old tire. So in my mask, I wanted to all click um, the stamp here to see the mask alone. And there are a few um, filters I want to apply. So I'm right clicking add filter effect and I want to go to um, blur slope, which will break up the edge. Just make sure your intensity is a little bit lower. And you also want to um, change your um, the size here in the source tiling. You can really make it small like that and then change the intensity divided to 1000 to really have a fine control of the edge. You can see now the mask is really getting uh, broken up. You can play with contrast to make this really chunky. And if you view it, uh, you can see now that the edge is not perfect anymore. It's a little bit broken up. It might be a bit too excessive. So you can also just um, reduce the amount a little bit more. So it's still a little bit clean. And I think also the height is still a bit strong. So I'm just going to the height and reducing that even further maybe 0.03 to get a really subtle height effect like that. 
All right, so now let's work on the first technical aspect, which is anchor pointing. So what I want to do now, I want to right click my um, last mask, which is this one here, and I want to right click the blur slope. I want to create an anchor point. I want to rename this to uh, maybe um, font anchor point. This will be essentially my hero anchor point. And what it is doing is essentially creating a reference so I can uh, recall this mask anywhere in my layer stack. So the first thing what I want to do, I want to create some kind of a dust pass around it. So I'll be creating a new fill layer and this will be called dust. So this dust pass will effectively be affecting the whole tire. But for now, I will just have it affect the text here. So let's just go to a kind of a brownish uh, desaturated dark uh, color here. And obviously we want to have no height, no metal, no normal, no opacity, increase the roughness, uh, maybe something like that. We can go a little bit more into um, the yellows, I guess just to dial it in a little bit, something like that. And this is again now affecting everything. So I'm right clicking, creating a black mask, so it's kind of disabled. And if I now go into my dust, if I right click here and create a fill in here, fill effect. And this fill effect, instead of giving it some kind of color, I want to reference this anchor point. You can see now the dust is only being affected on the text itself. So if I visualize it, you can see this is now my Mac, my mask. And if I change it in my font stamp, this will be automatically be adjusted. So what do I want to do? I want to kind of extend this mask. So I'm right clicking and I'm creating a new effect on top of this and I want to blur it. So I'm creating this uniform uh, glow essentially around it, which is which will give me a nice impression of where I want to see dust. So I only want dust on the grooves like a cavity map essentially so i want to duplicate let's let's just say um, anchor reference as this fill effect i want to duplicate it Control d and move it to the top and then i want to change the type to um, subtract and you can see now i'm getting this outline and if i visualize the mass you will now see that this has now this kind of shadow around it and this is driven by anchor points so if i would go now to my stamp layer and i would create a paint layer in here and I would just paint something. You can see now, whenever I paint, I get this nice uh, um, dust around it automatically. And that is the beauty of anchor points. Uh, this is a very basic application, though it can get really advanced and uh, very crazy as well. So also what I want to do, I want to have the text to be a little bit lighter on these edges here. And this essentially is the same kind of um, idea. So I'm just duplicating um, this dust layer Control D, and I want to move it below my um, dust. And I just want to rename it Edge Bright or something like that. And in this case, I just want to affect color and I just want to essentially make it additive. So I, if I change the mode to uh, go back to base color and change the mode to add, it should get a little bit brighter. If I disable the mask, you can see now everything got a little bit brighter. And this is the main effect I want to achieve. It's just It just should be on the edges though. So if I go back into the masking slot right now, this is only affecting the inside here. So now we want to have it affect um, the edge essentially. So now I just removed all the other effects and I'm inverting um, this effect. So now the font is essentially black. So then we essentially just do the same. We create a filter. And this filter again will be a blur. And then we do kind of do the same thing. We just uh, control D this, create this on top. And this time we reinvert this and we uh, multiply that. So now we have like the inside essentially. So this kind of gives us this edge effect and we can change the intensity to see, um, to adjust it only to be on, on this, on the grooves here. And on top of that, we can also um, add a fill as an effect and use a, a mask to break it off or break it up. So I'm just using any mask here, just dropping it in. And this mask will be now set to, uh, because this is now dark, we want to keep it dark, so I'm multiplying this. So now this should be more crunched up. We can also change the contrast. And you can see now we don't have everywhere this brightness. So before, it's everywhere, and with the mask, it's uh, just slightly broken up. And it's a bit hard to see. Um, so let's just boost um, the intensity a little bit. And you can now see we're getting these a uh, little bit of brighter edges on it as if they got like chipped off or something. So I already like the look of this and we get now um, the dirt. So what we want to do next is add some more dust onto the tire itself. 
So right now we only added the dust on the font, on the text here. So I'm hitting, uh, going back into my dust layer, enabling the mask. And what I want to do now is create a new generator, which allows me to create a mask. So I'm using the mask editor because this is reading in my, um, my mesh maps. And essentially what I want to use is I want to use curvature. So I'm just enabling this full on, but I'm changing the mode to be um, cavities, which gives me the insight. So this is what is also uh, what you can see in the reference. Um, it says it's essentially um, dust collected in those grooves of the tire profile. And you can see we already get that out of the bat just by using the curvature mode. Um, obviously, you can change the size of it. So I'm just uh, playing around with these sliders in the curvature section to not have them affect everywhere the same. Something like that works quite well. And on top of that, I'm also um, trying to break the shape up. So I'm going into the texture slot at the bottom here, and I'm just dropping in some kind of um, softer kind of map. So I'm just dropping it into the texture slot here, making sure I enable texture opacity and also change the texture mode, not to overlay, but to multiply, which should make it a little bit darker like that. We can also change the mode to triplanar and we can also increase um, the contrast of the map itself to create a darker regions like that. So now it's it's not everywhere, right? You can see there's dust in the top here, but now not, it's not there. So if I visualize this, you will now see that we get this kind of dust uh, collecting here. I think the mask is a little bit too dark. So let's see if we can brighten it up a little. So we can go to um, global balance and try to just push it up. Obviously, the higher you push it, the more apparent this dust layer will become. And if I go back here, you will now see, oh, okay, we have quite a quite a big chunk of dust now. Uh, but we are missing it on the text. The, all the hard work we did is now gone. So um, instead of just applying the mask editor on the top here, uh, I want to make sure the mode is set to linear dodge add, which then um, adds on top of the previous mask. So they are now combined together. If I look, look at this now, you can now see that we have the tire and we have the dust on the vintage logo here as well. All right, so now let's get started on this handlebar here. So I'll be first working on this metal piece here, and then we're working on the headlight. So this is the reference. Again, I'm using PureRef. Uh, check out my previous tutorial on PureRef if you want to see what kind of PureRef mode this is. So again, to get the nice headlight, we first need to create this interior metal. And to do that, I'll be just reusing this mirror metal on the inside as well. So let's just get started with like a clean chrome of some kind of uh, breakup on it. So Control and Alt right clicking the object selects the texture set and Alt Q isolates that. So as you can see now, we are in this mode. So what I want to do now here is uh, create some kind of uh, clean metal. We don't want height, we don't want uh, opacity. So in the color, I'm just going for like a 60-70% um, white. And we don't want any roughness, we want me me metallic on, reduce the roughness even further, something like that. So now you can already see it's uh, very clean. And this would be my Chrome base. I always, again, hit Ctrl G to create a folder. It's just nicer for referencing or instantiating and also just for cleanliness in your layer stack. Um, so next up, what I want to do, I want to break up the roughness. So I'm right clicking, creating a new fill effect and making sure I'm only affecting roughness. And then I'm looking for a few um, grunge maps here. So I have a surface imperfection kit here um, in my library and you can just use any, you can use the default ones. I just have a nice uh, grunge map with some kind of fingerprints on it as well and uh, we will be upscaling my texture set resolution to 4k as well so we can see all the nice details and just by doing that you can already see uh, you get this nice breakup what i want to do though i want to set the mode um, go to roughness and also want to set this to uh, multiply and then we want to apply our levels on top of that so now i'm just reducing the uh, input white reducing it until i start to see some kind of breakup on here and this just allows me to just subtly break up the surface to get this nice um, look and feel of this map. I just want something really subtle, broken up, nothing too crazy. And also on top of that, I want to create another fill um, with some kind of scratches or just some regular breakup. So let's just look for our main library and look for scratches or something like that. And you can see we have quite a few popping up. So I'm just right clicking fill 
and I'm just dragging in, I'm not sure, let's just use maybe this one, scratches and dust. And I just want to drop that again into roughness, make sure I disable all the other ones. And you can now see we do have this map applied as well. Changing the mode again, we can also visualize it, um, hitting C to get go into the roughness mode. This is what we have right now. And I can just also use multiply um, or add actually to, to, to get what you want, right? So additive will give us this result. And again, on top of this, we can change the roughness or we can reduce the um, blending mode of this layer. So we have two layers. You can see subtle scratches now appearing and they showcase in this image as well. And that is the main idea. So we do have our nice reflective surface now on the inside. Again, it's affecting everything, right? So that's why I create this uh, folder. I can right click the folder, create a black mask, and now it's disabled. And now I just want to select certain aspects of this. So right clicking, creating a paint layer, hitting four for our geometry mode, make sure you're on object mode. And now you just um, drag over these areas and you get the chrome material mask off you can see now they are white um, where I have this material assigned also we want the centerpiece as well it's a bit hard to click and drag I'm using a Wacom so I'm always over selecting and then deselecting after you can hit X to switch between black and white paint materials back to M to shaded mode you can see we have the metal selected I also want this outer ring so back to four and selecting this front piece as well we now have these two reflective pieces, which are kind of chrome-like. If I go back to Alt-Q, we can see we have the glass back. So Control-Alt and right-clicking on the headlight glass goes into that texture set where we have the opacity. Right now, we don't have any um, glass shader applied. So what you want to do in your, you want to texture set, you want to isolate all the glass objects. So in the shader, you can see you've got this shader instance. You can click on that and create a new shader instance. And then you go into the shading menu, shader settings, and you can rename this to uh, glass shader. And the default type is PBR metal roughness. And you want to change to a PBR metal with um, alpha blending, which gives you the option to actually blend a little bit. And if I now play around with a fill layer, let's just uh, create one fill like this and we just call this one glass and I change my opacity you would then start to see we are kind of seeing through this uh, surface right so for the glass we want height roughness we don't want any metalness on it and that is I think all we want to keep so we don't have metalness that's right and now we have the glass right so what we want to do is we want to create this kind of nice bump effect here so you can see it has this bevel, but it seems to be only on the inside. The outside is pretty smooth. Um, so what we want to do, we want to first create this kind of um, bump effect as a height. So I'm just um, dropping this into our height material, and then we will be masking that off. So again, similar to what we did before, I'm creating a fill and just call this a uh, little yef or bump or whatever you want to call this new effect. And I just want to create this height material. And then I want to increase my height or essentially I want to um, drop in a procedural, which will be the bricks generator. I'm just dropping that in here and then I'm going into the pattern and I'm changing the bricks repetition. And you can now already see uh, we get these nice lines. If I go back to my main glass, reduce the roughness so it's nice and specky. And for now, just have it um, be visible so we can actually see what we are doing. Uh, we can now play around and change the look and feel of this relief. Right now, again, it's on both sides. We will be changing that shortly. So back to the relief. Uh, we do have our pattern now on max, essentially. So we can also go into the UV project and change the scale in there to create even more of these patterns. But as you can see, they are not super repetitive. So maybe 1.5 is enough. Um, and then we also need to look on the inside, which you can see is already pretty... Uh, straight down we can maybe rotate it slightly so um, hitting f1 to visualize the uv space um, this is now our texture map we can then as i said we can rotate it to just place it so it's essentially straight on um, maybe something like that it's a bit hard to see but i think this is uh, the back side is pretty straight so again now i'm creating a black mask here so it's essentially disabled and then in here, I'm creating a paint like so. And then I can only 
select the, the inside material using our four brush, which is the um, polygon, I think it's called tool, polygon fill, and I can only select the inside. Uh, make sure you're not on object mode, you just want to go on geometry, or you can actually go on UV space, and then you just select the inside. So um, on the outside now, it's clean, on the inside, it's uh, broken up, right? So that's the effect you want to go for. You don't want the bump on these uh, dials here, you maybe want it on this one as well, which is our real light. And now let's uh, go back to the glass parameters, change the mode, Let, let's leave it at black, but then we just um, change the opacity down and you can now start to see we have this nice uh, bumpy effect. All Q brings us the whole thing back, so now it's just a matter of dialing it in. Um, to your liking and again this will need to be adjusted in your rendering application because um, this is not really refracting but you get the nice look and feel of this glass effect right here all right so now you know how to do a realistic tire and i also showed you how to create custom shaders for the glass itself and in the next part part two i'll be showing you how to create that detailed car paint look we'll be going into um, advanced anchor point systems creating uh, rust peel and all that interesting stuff so be sure to check out the next video, which is part two.